Back now at 810 with the tragic murder of an 18-year-old girl in Massachusetts who just graduated from high school. Now her ex-boyfriend, a star football player, has been arrested. NBC's Jeff Rosen is here with the details. Jeff, good morning. Hi, David. Good morning to you. Police say this was all about control. A teenage boy angry at his ex-girlfriend. That's when they allege he got violence, cutting her throat and strangling her. This morning, a young woman is dead and her high school sweetheart is behind bars. Lauren Astley just graduated from Wayland High School, accepted to Elon University. Her future was so bright. She was known for her smile uh, and laughter. One night this week, Lauren never came home from work. Her father got nervous, went searching in the darkness of night, and made a stunning discovery. Her car abandoned next to a lake. No sign of Lauren. I notified the police. The car was windows were open and um, her purse was on the seat and uh, there was no key in the ignition. And so I was becoming very concerned at that point. The next morning, a passerby found Lauren Astley's body, and soon police would hone in on a suspect. Lauren's on again, off again boyfriend of three years, Nathaniel Fujita, on the high school football team, just recruited to play college ball. We are very confident that it was about uh, the perpetrator exercising power and control over someone he had. Had until recently, when police say Lauren broke up with him. Calling it a case of teen dating violence, investigators say Lauren's neck was slashed and she'd been strangled with a bungee cord. Do you know what happened to Lauren? Investigators say they found evidence inside Fujita's house. Blood on the floor of his garage near bungee cords. Bloody clothes and sneakers stuffed in a crawl space, along with dirt matching the marshy area where Lauren's body was discovered. In court, Nathaniel Fujita. He pled not guilty as prosecutors laid out the crime. A very strong case of premeditated murder and potentially extreme atrocity and cruelty. At one point, Lauren and her accused killer were so close. Wasn't in your life, do you feel, think you still would have? She interviewed his father for a school project posted on YouTube. Music that I love. A life so full of promise cut so short while another may be falling apart. Yes, my daughter is gone, but for Nate's family, there is tremendous loss too, and I miss her just so dearly, and it's gonna go on for a long time. Fujita is in jail this morning, held without bail. Police still don't have a motive here, saying they don't know what made him snap. We reached out to Fujita's lawyer, by the way, who declined to comment out of respect for Lauren's family. David. Jeff Rosson, thank you very much. Dr. Janet Taylor is a psychiatrist and Pat Brown is a criminal profiler. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Pat, let me start with you. Um, what do we know at this point about Nathaniel Fujita? Interestingly, David, we don't know hardly anything. We haven't heard anybody speaking about him or about his relationship with Lauren. But I do believe the police are correct. It's about power and control. It's not so much as a dating violence, it's relationship violence. And if this had been a couple that was a little bit older, we might have seen this happen in a family where a woman is divorcing her husband and she ends up murdered. Well, what's so, the dynamic there? What's that control dynamic that, that is somehow unique? Well, what we're talking about is a personality disorder. Somebody who it's, it's, a level, it's a level of psychopathy, a level, uh, maybe borderline personality disorder, where you have to have everything. Everything is about you and not about the other person. It's a it, real ego problem. And so when somebody turns you down, walks away, and you're not ready for that, you cannot take that hit to your ego. And unfortunately, this probably was uh, well, this probably seen before. I mean, this didn't just pop up. He did not just snap. It's been a three-year relationship that he's probably exerted more and more power, and probably in the relationship what was overlooked for Lauren, and this is why I want to warn a lot of young women, is does the man, does your young man respect you? Does he care about your feelings? Does, does he let you make decisions on your own, or is, he, it, is it always about him? And you always have to mm. cater to him constantly, over and over. So when you decide you don't want to cater anymore, he cannot take that. Janet, as a psychiatrist, you hear something about this, and it's so awful. And a, and a part of what makes it awful is that we're talking about teenagers, sure. um, new at love, immature in a lot of ways. When does it cross over that to become 
what Pat is describing. Well, the, re of, the, the real psychopath. issue we're talking about here is violence, and yeah. we all have the potential to commit a violent act, but you have to look at underlying psychological factors. Was he depressed? Did, had he had a previous uh, history or thought about suicide? Personality factors, I agree. With the control, impulsiveness, this is still a teenager. Teenage brains are impulsive and don't have enough emotional and behavioral control until sometimes the age of 25, and also okay, social and situational factors. If they had broken up, if she had left him, it then it just could have been a, just a rage and he just snapped. You, you know, you'll hear in this case, which happens to be true, no criminal record on the, uh, by uh, Fujita, um, you know, star athlete and all the rest, which leads you to that question, wh where is this coming from? Well, 16% um, of teen murders have no motive at all, but most likely it is the fact that maybe she had broken up with him mm -hmm. and in a fit of rage or passion, he just completely lost control. On the positive side, he's alive, he will be interviewed, they can do an in-depth psychological profile and get some insight into what happens and what makes a promising young man take the tragic life of someone. Pat, the, the obvious question though now is what we can glean from the kind of case they actually have against him, what the prosecutor has against him. Right. Well, I think I want to point out something really important here that, again, he does he did not snap. This is something that's in his personality and has been there all along. What he actually did was lure Lauren to his home to commit. Well, he didn't necessarily plan he was going to kill her, but he was going to win. And women, when they break up with somebody, young women, pay attention to this. If you've broken up with somebody and they tell you they just want to have that one last conversation, they just need closure, what they're depending on is that you are a really nice person and you feel like a rat if you don't show up at least, at least talk to the poor guy. So you go to him to an, uh, to an isolated location, and if you've had a problem in your relationship with power and control, don't make that last visit right. with him Pay in attention. a non-public place. Pay attention to those signs. All Absolutely. Right. Dr. Janet Taylor, thank you very much. Pat Brown, thank you. Thanks, thank both of you. And coming up next,